So we're going to start with Nathan Daniels from Polar. Hello. Hi there. Sorry. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming today. My name is Nathan Daniels, and this is Polar, Toothpaste Reinvented. So we've all been there before. You're rushing through your morning routine. You go into the bathroom, and you reach for your toothpaste, but it's empty and shriveled up. So you twist and fold it, trying to get every last bit out. Eventually, you give up in defeat and throw it out. So traditional toothpaste tubes remain impractical, unesthetic, and wasteful. That's why we created Polar, the refillable toothpaste dispenser. So the way it works is kind of like the Dollar Shave Club, but for toothpaste. You have the dispenser, and you have the cartridges that go inside. You insert the cartridge, press to dispense the perfect amount of paste, and after a month, you replace the eco-friendly cartridge. So the key features are the intuitive design, which delivers the perfect amount of paste, the contemporary aesthetic, which improves the look of your bathroom vanity, and the reusable dispenser, which reduces the amount of waste that comes from brushing your teeth. The pump system also maximizes the paste value for the user. So why does this matter? A product is just an object, but using it transforms it into an experience. We identified that high quality experiences translate to a high quality of life. So our business model is using the razor and blade model where we sell the starter pack with the dispenser and one cartridge. After that, where we really make the money is through the cartridge refill packs. So we identified our initial target users as the early adopters, the affluent, and the environmentalists. We plan to reach them through social media, health magazines, and brand partnerships. The way we plan to distribute the product is through online direct-to-consumer, and then dentist partnerships, and eventually retail stores. So the total uh, market size is $17.8 billion a year, going at 6% a year. Within that, the premium market makes up 10% of that, which is $1.8 billion, and we think we can capture 1% of that, which is $18 million a year. A comparable business called Hello Products, which sells premium toothpaste, uh, eight years after their birth, had $40 million a year in sales, which is why we think this is an achievable number. So taking a look at the unit economics for just the cartridges, not, not the dispensers, but just the cartridges, we could see that by year five, we think we could reach 150,000 subscribers. Part of the reason we think this is achievable is because Harry's uh, razor blade had a million users by week two. So by year five, 150,000 we think is a reasonable number. So looking at the competition, there are dispensers on the market and there are aesthetic toothpaste on the market. Polar is the only aesthetic and pump toothpaste. So there are two other companies that are attempting to do this. One of them is High Smile, one of them is Happier. But both of these companies due to the nature of their design, are not eco-friendly or are not economical, unlike our design. So going forward, we've already created one working prototype, and we're planning on producing 50 more of those prototypes and getting them out to our first initial users, and then continuing R&D, manufacturing, promoting, and eventually releasing the final product. So this is our team. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you guys being here. Great. Thank you very much. So, who's going to give the first question? Yes, Alex. Hey, Nathan. I really love the presentation. A lot of great enthusiasm and energy, and, and I love the deck, too. We do not invest in direct-to-consumer products or something like that, but we always wonder, for all our investments, of what is your competitive advantage, or what's your barrier to somebody else taking over your early hard efforts and running with the with the market, so to speak. What, what would prevent, uh, not a big uh, company like uh, Procter & Gamble, but some of the other smaller, nimbler, like a Harry's uh, company, do the same thing with you? Yep, definitely. So we have um, filed preliminary patents on our technology, on our pump system. Um, so ideally, that would prevent them from jumping in there. And then also, we believe that we're ahead of the curve on this product. Harry's isn't in the toothpaste market. So we believe that by being first to market with this, we can capture those people that are looking for that type of aesthetic product. Um, I'm going to second him. I love that presentation. love your enthusiasm. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the eco aspects of the actual pump and, and system, cartridge Definitely, system? definitely. So basically, the way that uh, current traditional toothpaste tubes are designed is up to seven even more layers of different materials so that it has the ability to bend and fold in different directions so you can get all the paste out. 
but due to the nature of our design, which is a pump mechanism, which sucks out the toothpaste, uh, we actually don't need as many layers for the actual cartridge, uh, meaning that we can reduce the, basically, the traditional toothpaste has certain constraints around using it with your hands, whereas due to our design, because it's a pump system, we're not constrained to those same material constraints. I'll, I'll go next. Great presentation, I echo that. Uh, great enthusiasm. Thank um, you. So my questions are around, are you currently looking to raise funding? If so, how much? Yeah, so basically right now, like I said, we're in the, uh, we have a working prototype. Yep. Um, this working prototype, we like to say it's 70% looks like and 70% works like. So it's not completely there. And we actually need the help of engineers and professionals. I'm a business student with a minor in design, so this is kind of just taking pieces of different things that I've learned over time yeah. and assembling them together. So we've been looking at different um, entrepreneurship conferences, all different school events, trying to hire um, an onboard an engineering team um, to kind of help us flesh out those last couple things in terms of how much pace comes out, all of that. Um, so right now we're looking for 25,000 for the product R&D, and then 25,000 for marketing. Got it, got it. One, one little suggestion tidbit would be also around your IP is to maybe do a freedom to operate search, make sure you're not infringing on anyone else's uh, patents already Definitely, out there. definitely. I just had a question on the price point. Um, so I think it was like $9 for the subscription. Um, just wondering how you got there, like if you did any market research. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So over here at the end, um, one of our advisors is actually the CEO of a, um, a toothpaste company called Izzo Smile, which makes um, toothbrushes and all different types of oral gadgets. Um, so we have been having conversations with her and her team regarding how much uh, it would be to source the paste, how much it would be to manufacture the cartridges. So these are kind of just based off some estimates that she was giving us. And also, if you want a little comparison to um, the pricing analysis, this is, these are other uh, premium toothpaste companies and their pricing versus what we intend our pricing to be. And additionally, um, one other quick thing that we've made this pivot in the last couple of weeks is basically, so in the long term, we plan to have our own cartridges where we have a subscription model and people are coming back to us and we're the supplier of the toothpaste as well. But in order to get the product out even faster, we're planning on creating um, a version where you can slide in whatever toothpaste you currently have. And this will allow us to um, lower the cost of customer acquisition. So instead of having to switch over to a new toothpaste brand that you might not necessarily trust, um, this will allow you to just slip in you know, your Colgate, your Crest, into this nice sleek metal tube and allows you to basically create this aesthetic product out of something that used to be annoying to use, shriveled up, et cetera, so. That would be by license, right? You will al allow Colgate to sell well, that. So ideally we would partner with Colgate and they would make the cartridges, but that's later, I think. So right now we actually developed this, uh, another version. It's a little bit bigger. Um, also, I don't know if um, you guys have the video in the back that you guys can play. Um, do you guys have that back there? It's, uh, we just switched it. It's, if you press here, click for demo on this one, it will take you to the prototype uh, video. Yeah, that was it. Uh-oh. Okay, irrelevant. Uh, basically, basically, um, so our current design, we have a cartridge that you insert the cartridge into, um, the dispenser and then, um, but what we're planning on doing is basically making it so that you can take the cartridge out, insert your own tube, twist it in, and then slide it in. So it doesn't require any partnerships with any licensing or any partnerships with any brands. It's basically just an additional device that's complementary to, to your toothpaste tube that you just slide in and it gives it a sleek look with a button on the side and when you press the button, it dispenses the paste. Have you done any customer discovery on what the what consumers' relationship is with brushing their teeth and toothpaste and 
what the pain points might be and if they'd actually be willing to pay for a subscription. Definitely, definitely. So we've done a little bit of customer discovery just around campus, asking friends and random people, just quick little surveys and stuff. Oh yeah, this is the, the demo video. I don't know if it's playing. Do you wanna press play on it? Oh, there it is. So there's the cartridge, you insert the cartridge, dispense it and dispenses the paste. Um, so basically what people have told us, um, we've had a lot of different people tell us different things. So one of my friends said, oh, I brush my teeth in the shower, so I hate having to go out and get my toothpaste from the counter and bring it into the shower, all that. Um, but a lot of people have told us that they keep their toothpaste in a drawer because they don't like how it looks on their counter. And so it kind of keeps a clean vanity for them. And then a lot of additional problems that people have said is that they hate when the paste gets stuck around the end of their, um, uh, around the tube. So this solves both of those issues. But um, a lot of times, people might not necessarily have specific problems that they identify with toothpaste, but we're creating a solution that they don't know was a problem. So we're fixing something that they might not necessarily know was a problem for them. So like when Uber came out, people were like, at the beginning, it was like, oh, people don't have an issue calling cars. You just call a car service. But you're, you're solving an issue that people didn't know that they had in the first place. And that is the key to customer discovery. Not to say, do you like this? But to understand. So that's good. Anything else? I'm wondering if you, uh, what your go-to-market strategy is. Consumer products, CPG, very complicated. Very, very um, uh, Consumers are very fickle. Amazon is a big player, makes it very challenging sometimes on margins. What's your, what's your go-to-market strategy? Definitely. So, um, I don't know if I'm still connected, but, um, okay, so basically, um, we plan to basically create uh, a branding kind of like Apple vibes around our product. So create basically this like high quality luxury perception around the brand. Um, and Basically, we've noticed that in the market, you have, you know, you walk down the aisle of a supermarket and you see there's Crest, Colgate, and they all kind of look the same. They all kind of have that um, look that's not very inviting and friendly. So we want to create kind of this tech, clean vibe and luxury vibe for toothpaste. Thank you so much. Let's give uh, Nathan a hand. Thank you, guys.